Welcome everyone uh, to Five Writers, Five Minutes, where five of us writers give you lots of tips and hints for writing your own stories. I am Deborah Abella. I'm Tristan Banks. I'm Leon Tanner. I'm Sarah Armstrong. And I'm Zanny Louise. And this is our incredible, uber talented creative critique group, which I love. Um, and today we're actually going to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> um, I, a couple of years ago, worked out that uh, while I was writing a novel, that essentially what I'm doing is taking characters, putting them somewhere interesting and making stuff go wrong, which of course means that if we're going to be good at doing that, the thing we really need to be very skilled at is making trouble. So mm. today we are going to talk about the importance of making trouble, um, uh, which is going to be super, super fun. Now, um, Tristan, you've been in a little bit of trouble in your life. Um, how <laughs> is making trouble important to your story? What are you referring to, my present time? Uh, I, look, I reckon... Yeah, I love you calling it trouble too. It makes it so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like I always mm -hmm. call it conflict, you know, mm -hmm. that you have your want and your conflict and your stakes in the story. And I think that trouble or conflict in the story, the, the problem, the stuff that goes wrong is really related to the character's want. Like the character really needs mm -hmm. a very strong want or there's no way of making trouble for them, right? You can just make random things go wrong. But if they're driving towards something, if they need something to happen, if they're desperate for this thing to happen because you know is someone going to die is their life on the line or is it something um smaller could be said in the schoolyard and they're just worried mm. about somebody liking them or not liking yeah. them or a friend something to do with a friend as long as they really care about the thing and they mm. really need it to happen um the greater that want the the bigger the the bigger the trouble kind of thing and you need that i guess the greater the want the, the bigger the the trouble you needed you need to create Hmm. I, I so agree with that because the trouble can't just be random. It has to do with that character. And I remember chatting to uh, name drop here, uh, Kate DiCamillo a couple of years ago, and she cannot write a story until she works out what her character loves more than anything. And mm -hmm. then she knows she's got a story because her job then is to make it hard for them to get it or mm -hmm. they'll lose it they have to get it back. Um, so Lynn, Again, you're a big troublemaker from a long way back um, and you make trouble that also just makes me laugh and laugh. Um, how do you do it? Uh, like Tristan, uh, the first thing I want to know is what a character wants. And then I want to know what will happen if they don't get it. In other words, what's at stake? Because if the stakes are low, then the character's not really going to fight for what they want. Whereas if the stakes are high, then I can throw all sorts of trouble at them and they will keep on fighting for what they want. And that's what makes a great story. So um, in Spellhound, the Spellhound pup's parents have been stolen by a dragon and what he wants is to get them back. Now, I could have made it really easy for him. You know, I could have said, OK, Spellhound pup goes after the dragon, finds the dragon, says, hey, dragon, can I have my parents back? And the dragon says, yeah, sure, kid. Um, but that's a boring story. So I, I want to make it as hard as possible. And sometimes if I'm a little bit stuck or if I'm not quite sure what to do next, I'll ask myself, what's the worst thing that could happen to this character? What could I make happen to them that they would just hate so much? And even if I don't know how I'm going to make them, how I'm going to get them out of that situation, then I will make that happen and see what happens next. Mm -hmm. I I love that. It's kind of like a um a little bit of an um a trick if you get stuck, if you get mm -hmm. writer's block, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I I will often say to kids, if you are stuck, make something go wrong, <laughs> yeah. and that will instantly kind of re re-energize you, but it also will kind of perk you up to start again. Um, Sarah, making trouble for you. Yeah, again, it comes back to what the character wants. So in Big Magic, um, her mum disappears or disappears herself. So it's really clear what the trouble is there. The problem is her mum has disappeared. She wants to get her mum back. So kind of for me, the more straightforward the character desire or want is and the more kind of dramatic and terrible the problem, the easier the story is to write. And the kinds of questions I ask myself um, while I'm writing is, how can I make this thing that they want matter even more to them? Because, of course, the more it matters, the higher the stakes, the more interested the reader will be and more wanting to find out whether they're going to get it. And I kind of played around with, oh, if her mum disappears, maybe she hasn't got a dad, maybe she's only got a mum. I mean, she doesn't. But I sort of, they're the kinds of questions I ask myself, how can I make it matter even 
more. And what I gave was a time limit for having to rescue a mum. So I just sort of put more pressure on her. That so I'm making the problem bigger or the trouble bigger. And in Magic Arrive, which is the the sequel, um, of course, I couldn't have the same problem. So it's a bigger problem, which is, you know, magic, something going wrong with magic. And that was trickier in a way because I had to then make it relate to her personally because it's always got to matter to your character personally what happens. This is sort of big picture, magic's going wrong. What does that mean for her personally? So I had to play around with it a bit more to figure out how that trouble related to the character Yes. That that time because limit, having a time limit is a really good way of doing it, isn't it? Really good way of putting on the pressure. Yeah. Having a ticking yep. clock. That's yep. great. Absolutely. And I remember years ago my editor just saying, What's the ticking clock in this yep. novel? And me yeah. thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna rethink my whole novel because of that. Um, Zanny, making trouble for you. Do you have fun doing that? Well, I'm a goody two shoes from way back. Um, I was <laughs> that kid. <laughs> I was that kid who was always terrified of getting in trouble. Like I I remember my teacher sort of not even yelling at me, getting slightly cross at me when I was about in year five and it is burnt into my brain. So I think uh, for me learning to write novels, one of the things I really had to push myself with was putting my characters uh, in hot water more uh, because I was always too nice to them. Like I was always too careful with them. So when I wrote Queenie and Seven Moves, the thing worked, I think, because like you guys are saying, um, I thought about who Queenie was. I thought about what she cared most, which was comfort and her home and being safe. So right in that first chapter, take her out of that, take it away from her. Uh, and that, for me, just putting her into that situation right from the get-go uh, enabled me to have enough material there for story. And like you guys are saying, I just kept on ramping up the stakes. I get kept on thinking about what would she care most about? Okay, let's introduce her to that trouble. Let her face that. And now we will see her character grow because of that. So, yeah, I've I've definitely had to learn how to put my characters in trouble and I've had a lot of fun doing it, I hate to say. <laughs> how about well, you, Deb? Any, uh, uh, well, I, <laughs> the ultimate I troublemaker. Like to, yeah. I know. I would <laughs> like to think that we have taught you a lot about making trouble. <laughs> you sure that's, have. That's what I would like to think. Um, I... I I almost feel like apologizing to the characters in my story before I write it, because I feel like saying, hey, the good news is you're about to star in my novel. The bad news is I'm about to make your life a little bit miserable for a while, but stay <laughs> with me. Stay you know, with like me. I do <laughs> so, that, that's kind of how I think about it. And I remember when I wrote um, my novel um, Grimsden, which is part of a trilogy, um, I remember I put so much danger in it because it was about a bunch of kids trapped in a flooded city with sea monsters and flying machines and evil harbour lords. And I remember my editor, Zoe, sending me back notes saying, oh, look, this is really good. But then she just wrote two words. She said, more danger. And I went, great i'm in i'm happy and i got really kind of re-energized and really really excited to go back and make even more stuff go wrong so i i think that's probably our time we could talk about trouble for a long time as you can um, yeah. probably hear <laughs> um but i think all of those things we're talking about like get your characters and and take away something they love or work out what they love and then make mm -hmm. stuff go wrong make it hard for them to get that thing that they really really want um and make it fun and Again, if you get stick it's stuck, it's like Zanny said, and you don't know where to go next, make some stuff go wrong. Mm. So I guess we should say yeah. goodbye at that point. So um, <laughs> goodbye from all of us troublemakers. Yeah. <laughs> May the trouble be with you. Yeah.